Hello, this is Rachel from 7 and All, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a detailed walkthrough of the Sunlight Science A program. I'm going to walk through each of the key elements of this program so that you know what to expect if you're thinking about using this science curriculum, and I'm going to share some tips on how I implement it in real life in my own homeschool. curriculum. This is level A and the main science topics being covered are light and sound waves, biological features, space systems, and engineering design. This is the instructor's guide which is a key element of the program. There are other elements and I'm going to walk you through each key element but first I'm going to give you a look at the teacher's guide. So a big thing to note is that different from some elementary homeschool um, science curriculums, we are covering a variety of science topics within this year. And one thing that really stands out to me is that not all of these are related to biology or zoology. We're getting into some engineering. We're getting into how light and sound works. Um, and I really just do like that. I like the variety that's included in this. There can definitely be perks to diving in really deep into one topic for a science year. It can also be really neat to do a overview of a variety of topics throughout the year. All right, now I'm gonna be showing you just one week from the middle of the curriculum to kind of give you an idea for what to expect. Um, so this is what to expect in your teacher's guide. You have your little schedule. They tell you the supplies that you might need, but they schedule it out. What you're reading, what your activity sheet, your worksheet questions are for that day. And they also give you some little add-on suggestions of potential hands-on ideas. Then down below, you'll see the teaching notes right here. And they have those teaching notes and then they have explanations of what are some of their suggestions. In this particular week, we are studying some ocean creatures. We're studying sharks and dolphins, maybe whales too. And then we're gonna have our science experiment on Thursday. This is the five day program. So there is also a fifth day scheduled. You can see there is not a lot of reading. So this is not, you're not gonna be sitting down and reading for a long time. I think sometimes sunlight can get the reputation of, oh, it's a huge stack of books or a huge amount of reading. Especially in these elementary science programs, it's a very small amount of reading per day. Um, so if you didn't want to do science five days a week, I find it very doable to combine days, you know, read a little bit more, do a few more activity sheet questions. That is very doable. Um, their science experiment day is going to be the day that takes longer than the other ones. So you can plan on that day taking longer. You also get the answer key for the activity sheets right here in your teacher's guide. So it gives you the answers. And the activity sheets themselves, I'll show you the ones that go with this week, are right here. They are printed in color and they're simple. They're just coordinated with what you read about in your reading book. Sometimes they have cutouts. A lot of times they are filling in a short answer, checking, circling. Um, I'm using this with a six-year-old first grader. So sometimes for me, if they have a question more like this, this one I will have him answer orally and I will write down the answer. If your child's a little older or a little bit better at actually writing, constructing sentences, you they can be writing it themselves. But for the more one word, um, short answers or ones where they have a word bank or something like that, uh, matching, anything like that, he can write that himself. But some of the longer answers I will still be writing um, for my child because of his age. So that's just something to be aware of how you can adapt to work with different ages because this is this is aimed as their first grade science program but that doesn't mean it has to be done exactly with a first grader this is definitely a science that can be used family style now on to the books now sunlight does update and slightly change their book list from time to time so depending on the edition my book stack might look slightly different from yours they tend to be generally very similar choices. They tend to use some of the same publishers. This is the Usborne Children's Encyclopedia, big thick book that you're using through most of the year. Do not make the mistake that we did and buy the program without this book because there is the option to do so in case you already own it from purchasing it with 
the history program because the history curriculum uses the same encyclopedia because parts of it are related to history. Uh, so we accidentally bought it without this at first. I'm just trying to warn you, make sure you don't choose that option um, if you are purchasing directly from Sunlight because this book is definitely needed. And this is a very typical us born encyclopedia um, right here. And a lot of times you're just reading two pages, those two pages for the day, and that's it. Then some of the other variety of books you have here are Marsha Williams' Hooray for Inventors. We have a little biography of Pasteur and his story. So you spend several days reading through his story of discovering microbes. Um, and then these are going into different topics. What makes you ill? Sounds all around. They use several books from this Let's Read and Find Out series, which is excellent. Sounds and then light. Us Born, several Magic School Bus books tend to be scheduled in these early, uh, in these early programs from Sunlight. And then my year has the Us Born Lift the Flap Engineering for our engineering concepts. So those are the books. Like I said, it's not a huge stack of books. There is one more book, and that last book is This Beast which is pretty incredible. It's a very valuable, very well done book. And this is for the science experiments, but this is much more than just simply explaining to you how to do an experiment. There are big pictures in here. There's background information. There's teacher information to help you understand what, what's the goal here with this experiment. A lot of uh, explanation of exactly how to do the process, information on Okay, what's happening when we're looking at rainbows, refraction? So this is a really, really cool, really well done book. And this is for the science experiments that you are doing throughout the course. Now, I also want to mention this is not the only element or only thing that you're using for science experiments. Sunlight also offers science experiment videos. And I did not have these for the Sunlight K that we did but I do have them for this year and they are a not to miss, cannot miss for me. They have been excellent, excellently done. Have you ever looked up science videos for your kids on YouTube and found like a lot of them are very manic and wild and there's a lot of music or they're using funny cartoon voices and it's hard to even understand the content or what's going on. The sunlight science videos are not like that. They are so, I've been so impressed consistently. They're well done. They are funny, engaging. They're worth watching, uh, but they're also calm. <laughs> they also speak at a slow enough and clear enough pace that kids can follow the action. They can follow what's going on and actually get the information that they're supposed to be getting from it, um, which can be difficult with some of the much more complicated wow factor cartoonized um, science videos. So just wanna say a little plug that I've been consistently impressed with their science videos. Um, and I'm definitely happy to be using those alongside this book. So on your science experiment day, um, for us, a lot of times it looks like watching the video and then doing the experiment. Uh, and you don't have to like watch the video and then completely reteach this necessarily because they will teach quite a bit that because the video does cover a lot of the introductions, but you sh still should be doing some discussion of these things, some discussion and assessment with your children, getting their feedback um, and exploration of what's going on in this experiment and are they understanding the concepts. The last handy element of this homeschool curriculum is the Discover and Do Science Supplies Kit, which I appreciate because they don't just have you have that amazing science experiment book and then be like, yeah, right, I'm not gonna do these because I don't have any of this equipment. So we were just looking at those, that jelly bean experiment and here are your jelly beans right here. No need to buy a bag of 300 of them. Here we've got plaster of Paris because whoever has plaster of Paris lying around. Uh, we've got some tweezers and I've heard people say, oh, you know, it's too expensive. How do we need to buy multiple science kits for multiple kids? You definitely do not need to buy multiple science kits. And to a large extent, they're actually pretty reusable as long as you uh, use them 
well, <laughs> a lot of the pieces are pretty reusable. So for example, we use this um, styrofoam ball for an experiment about the rotation of the earth and the sun. And you do poke a little hole in it um, as part of that experiment, but it's totally still usable. And I've got it still right here. So if I'm using this curriculum again with a younger child in the future, I still have this random styrofoam ball that I might need that I wouldn't else otherwise easily have. So there might be some pieces that get used up and need to be replaced, like say the jelly beans, uh, but quite a few of these things, you know, or balloons, probably the gloves, some things might need to be replaced, but the nice thing about the science kits is they're gonna have some of the weirder <laughs> or more random elements um, that you might find yourself needing. So we got some little push pins here, uh, straws and a dipper. So these definitely do come in handy. And depending on the year, some of the materials are a little stranger than others probably.